Firepower Threat Defense 622 using a Firepower Device Manager to set up site-to-site uh, -site VPN. So we've got two uh, next-gen firewalls and we're going to use site-to-site uh, -site VPN to connect their LANs uh, over an unsecure channel. So we'll go to site-to-site -site VPN, we'll create a new site-to-site, -site. we'll give this uh, connection profile a name, and then we'll pick the local uh, sites interface, so this will be the outside or traditionally outside interface. Um, and then we'll add the remote IP address of the uh, second node that we're connecting to. We'll include a local network here. And I'm going to create an object for this. So we'll call this inside uh, VLAN and we'll give it the VLAN number. And then we'll put the IP address or subnet here. Um, now this is our internal network. say OK and then on the other side we'll put the remote network and again we'll create an object for this and this will be the inside network on the remote host or remote network and again we'll add the subnet here and we'll say OK and now we'll select that object that looks good and we'll hit next Now here we can define some policies. So I'm just gonna go through here. I'm using um, the middle option here and then you can see the specifics of that. Now you can create your own here if you want to. So this is your Ike V2 policy. Um, I'm just using a, a pre-configured one, uh, but I am selecting it. Likewise, when I look at the IPsec proposals, uh, I'm, I'm selecting AES SHA, and you can see some of the uh, parameters uh, that are included. Now, back in the ASA days, you would have to create these using, uh, or traditionally using CLI, or most did. You could have used ASDM. Um, but here, obviously, it's, uh, it's, it's quite easy and quite fast uh, to get that uh, configured. And you can create your own custom fairly easy as well. Now we'll do the, the pre-shared. Because this is like V2, we could have a different pre-shared key on either side. NAT exempt um, is if you have NAT, we certainly don't want to NAT the inside IP addresses when we're connecting to um, the uh, remote network. Um, we only want to NAT the IP addresses going to the internet. So that's what NAT exempt does and it actually creates it for you. I'm going to show you that a little bit later. Um, so we've jumped over to the other uh, device. So the first one's done, right? Other than we're waiting for the deployment to finish. So we're going to do the same thing here, but really opposite, right? Um, so again, uh, we'll select that outside interface. We'll give the uh, remote sites uh, IP address, which will be the uh, the first site that we configures external IP address. Here we'll um, create the objects, right? Just like we did in the last one. And obviously this is going to be the inside network of this site. We'll do the same for remote networks. Create an object. Now I called this one uh, VPN in the first one for whatever reason I called it VLAN dash inside. Um, but uh, but it, it doesn't the name doesn't really matter um, other than it might make it a little more difficult to troubleshoot. So I, I would have come back and fixed this in the in the video. It doesn't really matter because I'm just showing you how to get it configured. Okay, say okay, and then next. At this point, we're we're becoming experts in, in this. So again, we'll uh, check out the Ike V2 policy. Um, it's going to be the same as the other one because these are pre-canned, already configured. We're just selecting them. Um, AES SHA here, and again, just very quickly looking at that IPsec proposal here. And say OK. And now we will put in that pre-shared key, local and remote. Again, they could be different. They don't have to be the same. 
Um, and now we'll do NAT exempt. Again, this is to ensure that we're not NATing the IP addresses going from remote site internal uh, network to remote site internal network. And we'll deploy that. Perfect. So essentially at this point, um, we should start seeing, okay, there we go. We, we're starting to see uh, the connectivity come up. Um, so now we're pinging uh, from site A to site B and, and, and that's working. So that, that's perfect. The other side, however, we're not seeing the ping come up and um, we're gonna determine what's going on there in a, in a second. So if we look here, if um, so there's a couple commands you can run, um, like show crypto IPsec SA and show crypto Ike V2 SA. Um, and here we can get some good information. So this is IPsec SA. We can see the local and remote networks, right? We can see the access list that, that's in, uh, assigned to it. And then we can also see, which is most important, is the uh, packets that are encrypted and decrypted. Now again, this should be uh, fairly similar. Um, the, we should be able to see as many encrypted as decrypted, right? Here, uh, we do, we're do we doing the same on the other host, just uh, to see uh, the opposite uh, view of the data. But again, we should see encrypt, decrypt. Now what we'll do here is we'll do show crypto, oh, actually, what I'm gonna do here is determine why we're not able to ping. So what happened here is, is the IP address that was here, um, or what I thought was uh, on this host actually changed. So um, let's break out of this and let's uh, test it. And if the tunnels are 100% operational, this should come back as successful. Perfect. Okay, so well, let's, let's move back to um, looking at some of the uh, crypto uh, information. So crypto Ike V2 SA. And what we should see here is we, we obviously see the local and remote networks um, but but we should be able to see that this is an active connection. So I've just jumped over to the other node and, uh, and we'll highlight some of the things here. So if we look here, we can see that we are active, right? Now we didn't really need to check this because we've seen that our uh, connectivity came up on the host, but um, there's going to be times that uh, you're going to be troubleshooting and you might need to jump in there and have a peek. Let's connect to a share on the other side um, just to ensure that things are operational um, and, and working as expected. So we'll connect to that share. And then from here, I'll just create a file and make sure that I see it on the other side. Okay, file created, let's see if we see it. Everything's perfect. So everything's working uh, so far. But what I wanna show you real quick is um, the NAT portion of it. So I mentioned NAT exempt, right? Um, and the nice thing about it is when you select NAT exempt, it actually creates this for you. Um, and uh, instead of you having to write out the NAT policy. So if you look at it here, this is the NAT statement that gets created just by selecting that NAT exempt uh, option within the site to site VPN. And I'm going to show you that here again just as a reminder. Now, if you didn't select that, then you know you might have to go in and, and, and create it manually. But um, let's go back to site to site. Oh, actually, let's go to policy and look at the NAT statement just to prove that there isn't an additional NAT statement that's there, just the one to get to the internet, basically. All right, let's have a peek. If we scroll, we go next. And if we scroll down, there's that NAT exempt there. So that's it. You know, less than 10 minutes, you got site to site VPN up and running.